Many games come and go in the medieval genre. It truly is the most volatile corner of gaming really, in and out, constantly games releasing with promise of true medieval mastery, but most of them fail. Some stick around for a while and then fall apart in a blobby mess as the setting is the only thing that's actually attracting players to the game in the first place, not the good gameplay. You see, this is an issue with games set in the medieval time period. Everyone instantly thinks it's awesome, because I mean, it's medieval. Any game set during these times has a rush to its releases, but most turn out to have no actual real gameplay or attraction after that initial idea of medieval is cool. So it takes something special to be up there with the likes of Mountain Blade and Kingdom Come Deliverance, games that put gameplay before setting, but unfortunately most, as we've seen, have done it the other way round. Medieval Dynasty, however, came out in early access on the 17th of September, putting you in the medieval world as not a soldier, a lord or a king, but as a peasant, an ordinary man who just wants to make his way in the world, building your home, surviving for food and interacting with people and the world around you. But is it a strong enough contender to be up there with the historical classics or will it just fade away like another poor attempt in this long loved genre? Should you buy Medieval Dynasty? The game opens with a dramatic cinematic narrative cutscene with, you guessed it, an authentic American medieval accent. Now, I, I, I don't get why games do this either. But alas, it sets you up well for a brief look into the story you're about to embark on. Keep in mind, however, the game isn't heavily story focused. It has a, a loose lore to keep you interested and on track with some sort of direction that you should be moving in throughout, but there's nothing that gripping in this storyline. You were the eldest son of a simple family, nothing special but content with life. But there was a war where you lost it all, your home and most importantly, your family. The game starts with you arriving at Gostovia, a humble village run by a man that goes by the name of Unigost. He knew your uncle who was around these parts, a somewhat wealthy man and a good friend. And because of this, you are granted as much land as you wish to start building a life for yourself. So that's what you must do. Heading out, I found a great place to settle, just by the side of the river, making getting water easy, but not too far from the forest, so hunting and laying traps wasn't accessible. I perhaps built my house a little bit too close to the neighboring village of Gostovia, since at the time of building that house, I was unaware about the whole building my own village later on, but hey ho, we can always move if we need to later down the line. But right then, the house structure has been laid down, now for putting it together. The UI is pretty similar to most survival building games, with the ghost shadows of the parts of the building just waiting for you to hammer them all into place. Cutting down trees for the logs and sticks, collecting additional sticks from small shrubs strewn around the place, and heading to the river for reeds that you're going to turn into thatched roofs. All done. So this is your base of operations. Now it's time to feed yourself. You can create traps to be put around the area, especially in the forest, starting with a simple rabbit trap. And as far as I know and have experienced, it's a pretty much a 100% chance of catching rabbits with these things. So it's a good enough steady food source, at least for one person. Later on down the line, you can research fishing traps and other larger traps to capture things like boar and deer. But for now, we start here. Now, the beginning of Medieval Dynasty is very much like things we have seen before your generic survival game just in, well, a medieval setting. Setting up camp, finding food, expanding and building, and finally becoming prosperous. It's nothing all that special. But throughout, you're going to be doing various quests, although most of the time I've found they're mostly fetch quests and there's nothing too spectacular. Yet, it's enough to keep you moving and help you travel throughout the world a bit, which you might not have done if you were just focusing on the survival aspect of the game. Let me preface this segment with this. The game, I would say, has way more good than bad. While there are a lot of issues, we're going to be going over here, the good that outweighs all those disadvantages. I mean, overall, the game looks, well, good enough. I've seen a lot of Steam reviews saying the game looks gorgeous, and I can sort of understand why, as I'll get onto in a little bit, but it isn't the next Kingdom Come Deliverance in terms of graphics. I mean, it isn't ugly either, but the textures are somewhat low res if you really look close enough. Yeah, I think the devs have really done a clever job of hiding this in the game with map design. I mean, the lighting, I would admit, is gorgeous. Light rays coming through the trees, the sunset, and of course, the spooky atmosphere running through the forest at night with only the sound of shikadas, footsteps and the crackle of a glowing torch you were grasping.
But with how well the map has been thought out, you're often going to get these beautiful long views across the countryside. Lakes and trees, rolling hills creating an uplifting, gorgeous aesthetic experience. The overall look is gorgeous, but the individual bits when you look down closely isn't anything that special. The UI is also fine. I mean, like many things in terms of the game, nothing stands out as much, and in some ways that's a good thing, since there isn't any overarching issues that you keep coming across, yet there isn't anything all that spectacular about it either. But the UI, as you can see, definitely takes some inspiration from Kingdom Come Deliverance's UI. Some would say it's on the border of uncanny, yet I think they probably just about get away with it. It's smart, simple and intuitive, at least on the general view. When you go into the tab menu however, it does tend to get a little bit cluttered and confusing and the inventory really needs a better way rather than the click button to transfer item mechanic which is clearly made for console playability. Come on, all we need is a click and drag for instant moving stuff across inventories, it's that simple. However, one of the most exciting and attracting parts of the game is well of course the dynasty part of the title. Yes, you can build a house for yourself, thrive on your own, survive and become a strong commoner. Or you can expand, building more houses around, production facilities and farms to build up your reputation. You can also build up reputation by doing jobs and quests for the people around and your neighbours and they'll start to like you or, in some cases, dislike you. Once you have a high enough reputation, you can then invite them to join your settlement if you have a place for them to live. Then they can start farming, smithing, making things for you and your people in addition to paying you taxes so you can spend that dirty, dirty money on items or even more livestock. Now of course this comes down much further in the game and it takes time to build up to this level but I do think it's an awesome addition and perhaps the thing that makes it stand out from other similar survival games. Furthermore, you can grow relations with any woman in the world of Medieval Dynasty and eventually marry them, having a wife and eventually a child to carry on your dynasty when you're gone. Now throughout, there are actually very few bugs in the game, even for such an early access release. I haven't actually myself had any issues and most of the Steam reviews mention tiny ones or no issues at all. And because of this, the game is very well optimised and for 20 quid, you're getting a decently substantial amount of hours out of it. But it's not all plain sailing. Okay, so as I mentioned, there are way more positives than negatives, but that does not mean that the negatives aren't worth mentioning. The main one is content. As I've talked about frequently, there is a story, but the missions are pretty boring. Running from one place to another, doing small jobs for people, then rinse and repeat. There isn't much of a storyline per se, it's more of just a string of semi-related quests that you can do, yet they do often introduce you to some of the mechanics of the game, especially the early ones, so I wouldn't say they're completely useless. I would love to have more in-depth looks at the characters themselves though, especially the character that you play as. I understand that there's limitations with the aging of NPCs and heirs later on down the line, yet there needs to be something more than what at the moment at least feels like talking to NPC robots rather than actual living people in this breathing medieval world. Alas, it's more of a nitpick since the quests are definitely not the main part of the game. The main part of the game is strongly focused on survival and your own sandbox made story, but within this there are some other issues that are worth talking about. I mean, for example, there's the annoyance that it's clearly a game that was made for consoles first and foremost using F and E to transfer items across inventory, holding mouse clicks to do most of the actions, giving you much less control when like chopping down trees or doing pretty much everything else. I mean, it's not a biggie, but surely something could have been done to make it much more PC friendly, which is kind of ironic when you think about it because currently it's a PC only game. I'm not quite sure what they were thinking either. But all these problems aside, the game has potential. It's still in early access and I know many people are against buying this sort of thing and I don't blame you. But I for one don't really mind because it helps support the devs and gives them the money to hopefully create the game that they promise. It is a risk but at a price like this, £20, the game you already get is worth that money. So it can only improve in value as more updates come out which mind you are coming out thick and fast. So. Should you buy it? If you love survival games, single player, running around, collecting resources and building your homes, hunting, interacting with NPCs and finding your way throughout the world, then yes, the game definitely offers enough to sink 30 or 40 hours in for the average player, and there's still going to be things that you can expand upon and do even after that, especially when the updates come out. 
But if you've never been a fan of survival stuff and need something special, something unique that will bring you into the survival genre, at the moment at least, I don't think Medieval Dynasty can offer you that special thing to bring you in. Currently, it's somewhat of a run-of-the-mill in terms of survival games. Whilst having a few cool different features like building settlements and farms and wives and children and things, it may take some time for it to get to that game where it is really a special thing. One thing I would say though, the game needs co-op. Maybe not a full multiplayer like Rust or something like that, but some sort of co-op survival mechanic where you do everything you're doing now but with a buddy or with three other buddies. Adding in more wolves, more bears, and I think I've heard they might be adding in bandits along the line. So then with a co-op partner you're going to be able to test your skills even more in your survivability and it will be worth 10 times over. But hey, that's just speculation. It doesn't exist as of yet, but I do think co-op is something that would bring the value of the game way up. But all in all, Medieval Dynasty is a solid survival game with a bright future, but hardcore survivalists may need to give it some time before it gets to that fully fleshed out stage that they're probably looking for. But thank you so much for watching this video, do you agree with me? Or what is your opinion on Medieval Dynasty in terms of looking into getting it now? Make sure you leave a comment down below and I'll try and respond to as many as possible. But please subscribe if you haven't already and hit that like button and it helps out the channel more than you could ever know. But until then, I will see you in the next one.